Amy, I see that uh, council member uh, Deborah Buckeye has joined us on tonight's Zoom. Um, council member Buckeye, thank, nice to see you. Thanks for being here with us tonight. Uh, would you like to say hello before we get, a, get started? Um, I would just like to say hello. I'm only on for the first half hour. I'm liaison to the Disabilities Committee and they have a Zoom meeting at 6.30. But um, I'm happy to be here and I thank you for all your work and leadership. And um, I'm sure it'll be an exciting evening and, and I hope that all the, that you've been making progress on your activities during these last few days. Thank you. Terrific, thank you. Are there any other elected officials uh, with us? Uh, if you could just unmute yourself and let us know you're on, if I've missed anyone. We are probably going to be joined uh, later on during this meeting when it's in progress uh, by town supervisor. Uh, but apart from that, uh, if someone comes in and you notice Kim, maybe we could be sure to recognize any other elected officials that, that join us. I'm Victor Dover. I'm town planner and urban designer with Dover Coal and Partners and joined by a big team here, including Amy Groves, principal in our firm, who is uh, the project director on this effort. Uh, and by Kim Amplement from the town's planning staff, Kim Wave. Um, so uh, they and Amy will be presenting shortly. I just wanted to mention we're about to get started. We have um, uh, a few people coming in. What we're beginning tonight uh, is uh, a Zoom meeting that is meant to be uh, an opportunity to do online, a similar meeting to that that we held in person on Saturday. Uh, we are working on an action plan for Willow Ridge and Parkview and Niagara Falls Boulevard. Uh, and that's why this is a joint effort of both towns, Tonawanda and, and Amherst. And so we'll be looking at them together. The theme of this is that across the boulevard, you're, you're all in this together. First, a quick reminder, tonight's meeting is being recorded. So if you're not comfortable with that, uh, now that we wanna make sure you're aware of it and you can keep yourself muted or turn your camera off, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, we'll repeat some of these reminders as we go along. We also have a website uh, that's uh, www.connectingwrpvwillowridgeparkview.com, connectingwrpv.com. And we put links there to the recordings of these meetings and to work in progress. There's news of the work as it's unfolding. Uh, each day we're, we're putting new material there. So you'll wanna go check out that website. Also share that website link with anybody who wasn't able to join us. During the meeting tonight, we have, it's set up so we have a chat button at the bottom of your screen. Uh, if you have a question or a suggestion, or uh, you would like to, um, put forward your an idea and not wait for a, another uh, chance in the breakout rooms. That's a great way to do it. You can also use the meeting chat to contact Elise Dallas, who is serving as the technical mistress of ceremonies tonight. Elise is handling the Zoom. And if you're having trouble hearing or something's not working right for you, you can't see, uh, just uh, use the chat button, send Elise a message and she'll help you sort that out. So Kim, would you mind unmuting and giving your, your uh, hello and welcome? Sure, welcome everyone and thanks for joining us tonight. Um, as Victor sort of alluded to, the towns of Amherst and Tonawanda are, are beginning this joint project, which we're calling Across the Boulevard uh, for the Willow Ridge and Parkview neighborhoods. It's really just to, uh, you know, create it at what we're calling an action plan, um, but really just, you know, getting ideas um, from the neighborhood on what their future should be. Um, and so really this is sort of the beginning of that process. We're kicking it off with these virtual and in-person uh, workshops and other meetings. Um, so we're, we're glad to have you here. Um, and I also see that Kylie uh, Van Brunt from the town of Tonawanda is on as well. So um, if there's specific Tonawanda questions, she may be able to assist as well. So just again, thank you so much for joining and uh, we hope to see you throughout this whole process as we work on the plan. Well, thank you, Kim. I'll just give a quick rundown on what we're going to do tonight, how tonight's event will, uh, will unfold. In the beginning, Amy will come up and, and we'll together we'll talk about what the schedule uh, for this week of events is. We call this week the charrette. It's a fancy term for an intensive period of working in, uh, in a team form uh, to put forward ideas. So 
uh, we'll, we're, this week is a charrette. We'll describe the schedule for that uh, as it's already partly unfolded and continues to unfold through Thursday night of this week. We'll also summarize what we're hearing so far. And we're hearing these things through a lot of different channels. We're hearing from respondents to our online survey. <clears throat> we're hearing from conversations with people during last month's uh, site visit, from our bus tour this week, from our meeting on Saturday, from people dropping in the studio. Amy will summarize that. We're then going to turn, we have new material here for those of you who've been to several meetings. So stay with us through that short recap because you're going to want to hear this new material. Uh, Glenn Kellogg, who is our uh, crack economist, um, sharpshooter urban economist, uh, is going to share with us some of his initial findings so far about the market here for real estate, for business, um, what the economic situation is uh, for these neighborhoods. And once that's done, uh, we'll, it won't take very long, so stay with us through that. We're going to then move into breakout rooms. The you know Zoom has this feature where we can go into smaller groups in what they call breakout rooms. Elise will sort us into those. Uh, she'll give some instructions just before we do that. And, and then uh, you'll be able to work in small groups. We have some specific questions. There's a person to work with you in each room. Uh, it just gives people a chance to talk with one another in, uh, in a quick back and forth, more conversational setting. You can mark a map just like we did in person, but this time on your screen. And uh, during that time, Glenn Kellogg, our economist I mentioned a moment ago, uh, Mike Raby, our engineer, uh, and myself will be floating around the rooms. So we'll move from room to room uh, to hear the differences in each conversation, help uh, answer any questions we can as we go. At the end of that, we will then come back into the main room in Zoom and get a chance to hear from each of the groups. Well, here are some names to know, uh, just this, the sponsors and partners in this effort. Of course, Kim and I mentioned the two towns. Our firm, Dover Cole & Partners, is a town planning and urban design firm. We're taking the lead. We'll be bringing back the plan. Uh, my name is Victor Dover. I'm one of the founders of, of our firm. And Amy Groves, who you see in the picture there, is uh, the project director for this effort. We're also joined by experts uh, in transportation planning from a firm called Nelson Nygaard. Uh, and our economist, Lynn Kellogg. We've been getting help as well uh, with uh, communications and community outreach from the folks at Bergman. So that's the team that's working for you on this effort. The red line on this map describes the study area for our, for our um, effort this week. I will, two things about that line to know. Of course, it spans both towns and uh, it includes commercial and residential areas, includes the park, it includes trails, it includes transportation facilities, the edges of campus. Um, and so it's, there's a lot in there. And once you first to realize that uh, not everything inside the line is, is the same. So we don't have to have a plan in which everything, every solution is the same either. We can, we want to learn about all the different kinds of conditions that you want to bring to our attention. The second thing to know about the line is uh, don't worry so much about the line. If you have an idea that about something that lies just outside that line, by all means, tell us, share it with us, uh, show it to us, uh, let us in on it. And we that helps us get this right. So uh, the line is there for our convenience, but it's not a constraint. Uh, one way to think about what we're doing this week is to consider yourselves like us in the before and after business. You imagine how a place that you know can be changed over time into a place you might like better. And a lot of times this involves rethinking transportation corridors and streets, uh, sometimes taking the highway style streets that uh, the DOTs all across America built in years past and imagining how they might be different. What if? What if the lanes were the right size? What if there were street trees? What if there were real sidewalks? What if uh, over time, as buildings age out, the new buildings that replace them are more street oriented and street friendly? Uh, here's just an example of that kind of before and after thinking from another project. So that, of course, is not Niagara Falls Boulevard or your neighborhood street. So we're asking you to squint and in your mind's eye, visualize what before and after could mean for your street. And 
uh, what would make it better, not worse. So uh, that's that's what we're asking you to do in this challenge. Now, the boulevard itself is on everybody's minds because uh, when I said your neighborhoods are all in this together, that sounds fine until you try to walk from one to the other uh, across the boulevard. And as we know, there are lots of headlines, lots of stories, some of them quite tragic about uh, problems of uh, uh, lack of safety, for example, crossing the boulevard. Um, there's also a placemaking and economic development problem uh, in uh, how it looks and uh, uh, what can be done to make it more attractive as well as safer. And, maybe, and you know, lots of corridors like this all across the country are being rethought. So you're not alone in being able to do that. There's an emerging body of literature that supports uh, other ways these can be designed. So uh, when you look at those existing conditions, the before picture and your before and after sequence, uh, you're not stuck. It's okay to imagine just how much better it really could be. Uh, so the, the as Victor mentioned, the impetus for this project was you know thinking about the boulevard and some of the um, safety issues and concerns. Uh, the towns came together and actually put together a project charter. So this is on the project website, and it it outlines the goals for this process: uh, transportation, economics, uh, but most importantly, you see in the bold text here, uh, wanting the plan uh, to reflect the future vision of the community in this area. So. Uh, that's our challenge for uh, this week is, uh, you know, uh, re reaching out and uh, listening and, and hearing directly from you what you would like to see and uh, working that into the action plan. So uh, over the course of this week, we've got a number of different ways to get involved. Um, some of you have already started over the past couple of days. Uh, I've got the, the rough schedule here. Um, there's still opportunities to get involved. So if you know your friends and neighbors uh, who maybe haven't been to anything, if you want to let them know um, to come and join us. Uh, you know, and, and tell us your ideas and your thoughts and, and how the neighborhoods could improve and, and be better and um, uh, grow into the future. So uh, uh, we met, we started this, uh, we're, we're calling the charrette with a, a hands-on session last Saturday. Uh, we had a couple of tables of people who gathered around base maps and um, did some brainstorming and uh, talk, you know, about in, similar to what we're going to do tonight, but in person and, and over maps with markers. Um, and uh, at the end of the session, we had one person from each table get up and, and recap um, what those ideas were. And you can see here uh, this list of you know some of the key things we heard. We heard a lot about um, bike paths and uh, making them safer and connected, um, and you know where there's needed improvements for bike crossings of the boulevard, uh, the boulevard itself, ideas about redesigning, also updating vacant um, and outdated parcels. Um, an idea about village nodes, this idea that along the corridor there could be um, some small, uh, you know, node areas where there's um, shops and restaurants and a uh, walkable space that could start in the short term with, you know, just one or two parcels and um, but then grow over time. Uh, improving access to the parks and ideas about amenities in the parks, um, you know, events and programs, ideas for food trucks and other ways that could activate the parks and uh, really make them uh, valuable resources for the neighbors uh, nearby. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think, you know, we had, got a really great start on Saturday. Then on Sunday, uh, we uh, went out on a bus and uh, went and, you know, saw some of these things firsthand. Uh, we're able to, you know, walk along the sidewalks and, and stand out at some of the key areas and talk about, uh, you know, what people would like to see in the future. And, uh, you know, again, it's just really helping us to understand what the community wants to see and what that community vision is. So that leads us to tonight. We're gonna do, again, a similar exercise to what we did on Saturday, but over Google Maps, uh, we're gonna, in a few, just a few minutes, break into groups to do that with everyone here tonight. So looking forward to hearing from you. Uh, and then we are set up over at uh, Dexter Terrace Elementary School um, in the Annex building uh, right up front. Uh, we're there all day, um, today through Wednesday, so you can stop by any time, uh, 9 to 6, and actually tomorrow we're going to uh, stay till uh, at least 8.30, so uh, you can, uh, you know, if you want to stop by after work, you can uh, stop in, look over our shoulder, see what we're doing. We're basically taking all of the words and ideas that people are talking about and starting to create illustrations. So, you know, here's an example from some of the ideas that came up on, on Saturday morning. Uh, Kenneth Garcia did this sketch just this morning. 
um, you know, starting to outline, you know, some of the key ideas. This is at the intersection of Niagara Falls Boulevard um, and right at near Ellicott Creek. And so ideas about, you know, having a new pedestrian bike bridge you know, that came up or where new shared use paths um, could be and connect with, you know, wider crosswalks. So the idea is getting all these things drawn on the map um, so that the towns can then, you know, work forward in a, a coordinated manner uh, to, to make these improvements. So first is this week defining what those things are. So we're going to be doing more drawings like these and really want, you know, folks to come in, drop in, tell us if we, you know, got it right or we misunderstood what you know, what was being said uh, you know, and we can you know create new drawings and um, you know want to try to really reflect um, the vision so we are uh, gonna have what we call work in progress on Thursday night at six o'clock it's also going to be on zoom so there'll be a recording if you're not able to join us right at six you can uh, watch it later and 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 give us your thoughts and again we're going to be recapping everything we've heard um, including what we hear at the meeting tonight and, um, you know, those initial drawings that we're able to create this week um, for the area. While this is all going on, we've also, um, Victor mentioned the website, connectingwrpv.com. Uh, I've got uh, ways to get involved and participate in surveys online. So if you can't come over to the studio space, we're monitoring these um, each, each day and, um, get, and have a few more people who are participating that way. So I want to start just by giving a, a short summary of some of the things you know, we've been hearing. You know, our team started uh, in early March. We had an initial site visit and meetings with stakeholders and uh, went out and uh, you know, started you know, getting out on the site, um, understanding the existing conditions. We had a kickoff meeting uh, back in um, March uh, 14th. We had over 60 people join us on that Zoom call. Um, during that night, we had uh, people able to participate by their phone, and here's some of the things we heard. We asked, you know, what was one word um, that you would use to describe the area today? Uh, you can see the bigger words are words that multiple people said. So, um, you know, some of those things were busy and traffic, uh, but also neighborhood and community. So these are the types of things people are thinking about when they're thinking of this area. Uh, we asked again, you know, what was one word that you would like to describe the area in the future in your vision? And so some of the things that multiple people said, connected, safe, walkable, these are some of the themes that were coming out of that night. Uh, we asked what was your primary, um, you know, what you would like to see included in the action plan, what was most important? And so, you know, many people on the call that night you know, thought it was most important talking about the redesign of Niagara Falls Boulevard, but also connecting the trails network and improving the parks. Uh, here's another question we asked, um, you know, uh, about Niagara Falls Boulevard, you know, what three things you thought would be most important to improve? And so, you know, those crossings, uh, making safe areas to cross and also, uh, you know, connectivity with the neighborhood, wider sidewalks. So this gives us a good sense of, you know, they're all important, but, you know, kind of what, what priorities kind of rise to the top. We had a parallel survey going on on the website. Um, so, uh, you know, this was in the, the weeks leading up to the charrette. Um, and we asked people, um, you know, some similar questions to what we had asked in the, the kickoff meeting. Uh, we had, I think, 57 uh, folks participate that way. Uh, interestingly, all, all of them were residents of the area and they were evenly split uh, between uh, the Tonawanda side and Amherst. So um, they got a pretty good sampling and I uh, thought this answer was interesting. We asked, um, you know, if you would walk more frequently, if there were safer and improved pedestrian accommodations and, you know, 51% yes and 33% maybe. So that was a pretty um, good response and, you know, a similar response also with, um, you know, if there were safer and improved bike accommodations. Uh, we asked what kinds of places you would like to see more of in the area. Um, and so restaurants actually came to the forefront of that. Um, but also, you know, civic uses and retail personal service shops. So I think that's, um, you know, interesting just people thinking about what would make their area more complete. These are the things that were rising to the top. We asked these two questions, which I thought I put them side by side here because I thought it was interesting to look at them together. Um, first, we asked if there should be more opportunities for mixed use development. And we had 56% uh, not sure, 28% um, yes, and 16% and, and no. So um, again, a, a, big, um, a big group there, not quite sure what we mean by mixed use development and what that would be. And so that's something where we can you know, explore more together. 
Um, but then we also asked if in the future you would like the ability to limit your trips by parking and walking to multiple areas and, you know, 70% said yes. So I think that was interesting. Um, you know, one of the things that makes it easier to walk is, um, is if there is a mix of uses and, you know, things closer together within walking distance. So uh, again, would like to hear when we break into groups, your thoughts more on that and, you know, what, what you would like uh, those walkable uh, areas to, to be like. We asked, we had a, a, a map and asked about, um, you know, to identify locations and talk about what should be improved. Some of the things we were hearing uh, about connecting the trails, um, you know, pedestrian crossings, specifically near Checkers and Andersons and Ted's, um, and about, you know, difficulties riding bikes on the boulevard. Uh, I mentioned we, this is up on the, the website currently. There's a map and we've got a number of people who've been adding to the map markers and um, talking about, you know, what they would like to see in the future. So again, if, if you have friends or neighbors who couldn't come out with us tonight, but, um, you know, would want to participate in this process and, and tell us what they would like to see in the action plan, please encourage them to go to the website. And it's, you know, again, another opportunity is to tell us what's important to you. So, you know, we've been thinking a lot about, uh, you know, I mentioned mixed use development and what that could look like. Um, and the town does have a, a mixed use zoning code. So it is not uh, applied to this area. It's available to interested developers if they would want to use it. Uh, it's called what's called the floating code. Um, but it, it basically helps to shape um, walkable mixed use spaces. So we thought that's interesting, um, you know, that, that that work, that zoning code has already been put into place. And we're thinking about what areas um, that might be applicable to, thinking about, um, you know, these uh, walkable areas. Um, and uh, all that leads me to um, wanting to introduce uh, Glenn Kellogg. Um, so Glenn is our economist, and he's been taking a deeper dive um, at the market side, at uh, the market analysis. Uh, so I'm going to ask Glenn if you can unmute and uh, want to share just a little bit about what he's been finding, and then he'll also be available tonight going through the rooms and um, can answer any more detailed questions about these findings. Thanks, Amy. Can you hear me? Great. Um, well, let's look, take a look at this. So uh, on the economic side of this, trying to understand the area and be prepared for how that shapes development, the first thing is taking a look at population, took a look at, uh, at the county and Niagara County close by. And as you see from the charts, I'm, I'm sure you're well aware, the, uh, there's not a population explosion going on at the moment, even though I understand that in the last uh, decade, um, uh, Erie County actually turned around and grew for the first time in quite a while, uh, which is great. And, uh, but there's also not a tragedy. Things aren't um, quickly, quickly declining either. Let's go to the next slide. So it plays out in housing trends. Um, this, uh, the study area and your neighborhoods are more valuable on average than Niagara County or Erie County on average. Um, let's move forward. And that, uh, that leads to sort of the conclusion of this, of projections for who new neighbors in the area might be, that as, uh, as the area is projected to have uh, a fairly healthy growth, not, not booming, not trailing, healthy growth uh, in the coming years, it looks like those new residents are likely to be in upper incomes. So, uh, so that means that there is probably an opportunity for, um, for some quality housing opportunities. Retail, um, taking a look at retail, we've got a really large or a really long commercial corridor and uh, as, as shown here in the study area. Um, let's take a look at the next slide. Oh, there we go. Uh, the study area retail supply, this is what is sold currently uh, or as of 2017 when data was last available for, uh, for the study area. And as you can see, it's maybe not surprisingly dominated by motor vehicle and parts dealers. Uh, let's move to the next one. But to really analyze, that was um, uh, very much dominated by the political boundaries of the area, not so much the economic boundaries that don't um, behave very well to red lines on a map. Um, 
In this case, we took a look at the corridor and drew a five and a 10 minute driving radius to better understand the real retail market in, in the area. So if we go to the next slide, the conclusion of what we found there is in um, uh, what we call a gap analysis. That's saying, uh, just like that first slide on this, there's the supply of what's being sold. And then there's also the, um, uh, the demand of what people in that area are consuming. And when you subtract the two, you get the gap. And on the left-hand side, you can see that that's oversupply and, and, uh, and attraction. There are more sales in grocery stores in this area than there are people in this area spending money on grocery stores. So people are coming from outside this area to spend money at the, um, uh, at the grocery stores here. And that's similar for almost every single category. The dark blue is the, uh, the five minute drive, the light blue is the 10 minute drive. You can see that under general merchandise and clothing, there's the hope that maybe there's uh, some extra opportunity for, uh, for retail in the area, but it's really balanced by the other side of what's in the 10 minute radius that those things are already, um, already provided for in this area. And the, the big picture of this is saying that there is not a uh, obvious demand for very large amounts of new retail, that, uh, that the supply of retail already outstrips the, the demand in this area. Can we move to the next slide? Hey, Glenn, before you change to employment, can I just oh, yeah. ask a couple of questions to clarify? Um, sure. Like when you talk about sales going out, that that's as simple as someone from Willow Ridge or Parkview going down to Consumer Square uh, to purchase something or uh, going to one of the remaining stores, the Boulevard Mall or driving into Williamsville. It's, it doesn't mean that they're, they're going across the region to do it. it might, they might be just, no, going fact, just outside our area. And so we're exactly, really looking at this can... one section of Niagara Falls Boulevard to see uh, you know, what's... Um, that, that lighter blue line, that 10 minute distance is just just outside. Exactly. Uh, Amy, could you jump back up to the map? I think this is a really so, an interesting idea. There's like a trade area and then there's a secondary trade area where things that can have a bigger attractive and power reach from a larger. Very area. conveniently, the way these trade areas are centered and line up, the five minute really closely, fairly closely correlates to the length of the boulevard that we're looking at. It's a little bit longer. But really, that you can, in your mind, equate that five-minute driving radius with, with the boulevard. And so the lack of a big gap means that some equilibrium has been achieved. And there's not demand for a lot of additional retail space. But that said, there, will be, there still will be new buildings built, like where, people, where a building has aged out or, and needs to be replaced to, with a new one that has all the modern systems or formats or those kinds of things we'll still have a building replaced now and then uh, even though equilibrium is there and there's not a big gap correct exactly exactly that this is not saying that new retail is impossible but it is saying that a retail a retail forward strategy for what should fill up every lot in the corridor um, would be exceedingly difficult but as you say First of all, um, if there are new residents coming in, that will add additional demand in the first place. But secondly, uh, there are going to be opportunities for particularly maybe perhaps place-based uh, or amenity-oriented retail, where a new development that uh, the, the, uh, uh, the development might have retail as an amenity very specific to the other uses in that place. And that might work very well um, on its own. The other thing to comment on um, the, uh, the larger uh, picture of this, if you, uh, Amy, move to the next slide. This also, while this says that there's not an obvious demand for new retail based on uh, the current residents' spendings, economically, this is also potentially a uh, strategically advantageous uh, position. This means that this is uh, this corridor is a regional destination. People are coming from all over the place to spend their money here, um, and it may be that uh, that trade area 
is wide enough in this in this area that um, people will continue to come for even more retail services. I see so Bill Kaiser I, is I, on the call, and he gave us an example of that during our tour on Saturday when he talked about the folks coming from Canada to visit Coles, for example, and the Coles in our corridor being the first one they encounter. Exactly. Well, so being a destination is a great sure thing. I understood what you were describing. No, absolutely. And uh, I'm, I've am i been trying to move through this uh, quickly and uh, didn't really maybe give that enough, uh, quite enough time to, um, to give the nuance of the message there. But thank you, Victor. I think that, uh, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we, I'm glad we took an extra minute to, to, to talk about that. Um, should we move on to the uh, land? Incidentally, if anyone has further questions about uh, about the research, I've got pages and pages and slides and slides of, of this information that I've tried to boil down to like the, the real nuggets to take away on this. So the, the next thing, not to keep us here all evening, is um, to talk about employment. Um, it, uh, Amy, is this the first slide on the employment? So again, we began looking with the study area at employment. If you'd move along. And in the study area, employment is really led, uh, maybe not surprisingly, because it's really focused on the boulevard with accommodation and food services and retail trade. But if you'll move ahead, if you look, uh, there are two fairly large employment areas immediately adjacent to this site that aren't in the study area. And uh, really in an economic uh, study of this, I think really need to be included. The first is the, I believe it's called the Autobahn Business Park or Industrial Park area. And there are a lot of jobs there. Likewise, there's a behemoth of a uh, employer just next door, obviously with the University of Buffalo. So when you include those and take a look at, uh, at employment in this area, Obviously, with um, Buffalo Educational Services blows it out. That's a major regional employer with thousands of jobs. Um, uh, but it also boosts many of these other uh, many of these other categories. We move on to the next slide. In taking a look at the current employment, uh, we can then use state projections to push out uh, what what that means in the future and what, what kind of job growth is likely to be captured here based on what's here now. I've taken education out because uh, University of Buffalo has their own um, projections and really that's not gonna affect much of our planning aside from potentially the, uh, the people working there who might be interested in living in, in our community. Um, but we, we can see that there's still a lot of new um, opportunity for employment in this area. And we can translate that to projections for a demand for space. You can move to the next slide. And so uh, we translate that based on, a, on some uh, standard estimates of square foot per worker to understand uh, potential demand for new space, for new employment space in this area. And there actually is a fairly substantial, based on that employment growth, there may be some, some substantial um, demand for, uh, for different kinds of employment space. This is led by, this shows it's being led by office that's really uh, projected off of that Autobahn um, business area, as you can see, because this is in that um, study area plus category. Uh, so whatever is in that office category, we might really think about as flex space, an extension of what's already in that Autobahn area. Maybe move forward. I think that might be the end. Yes. I'll hand it back to you unless there are more questions about uh, about that kind of about the uh, the employment, retail, population. That's, That's my take. <laughs> So, so I mentioned Glenn is going to be uh, circulating through the rooms tonight. So if you have additional information, he does have 50 or 60 slides of charts that he can bring up and uh, explains more of the, the background and what he's been looking at. And um, again, he's you know helping us as we're um, you know working together on this action plan to help understand what uh, the potential is for the area. And uh, so, uh, you know, uh, glad to work together with Glenn. Yes. Just want to mention that uh, town supervisor Brian Coppola just joined us. And um, Brian, if you if you need to say anything, unmute and do it now. Or, but we're about to bounce over into the breakout rooms. So uh, say hello. Just for, people, 
Just looking forward to bouncing through the breakout rooms. So, hi, everybody. <laughs> Thanks. All right. So, uh, in just a minute, we, uh, Elise is going to um, break us up. And, and as mentioned, we're going to go into to groups and, and do some brainstorming together. Uh, but stick around for toward the end of the meeting because we're going to have one person from each group then recap uh, what the, the ideas were. So, you're not going to miss out on hearing what was discussed in the other rooms. Um, there's each, each room is going to have a facilitator from our team, and uh, those facilitators will have a series of questions that can help guide the conversation. Uh, if you want to talk about other things, of course, uh, we, we want to hear what's important to you, but these are the types of things that uh, we'll be asking about, uh, things about uh, talk, thinking about where there's needs for connections or amenities or there are specific concerns in the neighborhood. Um, and what would make the neighborhood more complete. Um, and then, you know, we'll spend some time focused in on the boulevard itself and, uh, you know, looking at if there's key intersections or areas that are difficult to cross. And, you know, we already know some of this from last Saturday's input, but again, just want to kind of build on that and, and hear, you know, if there's additional things or nuances to what we've been hearing so far. Um, and also, you know, talking about the vision for future land uses along the corridor. Um, you know, if there's uh, existing buildings or land uses that should be retained um, or where there's um, underutilized parcels that could be uh, the sites um, for uh, future redevelopment and what that could look like. Uh, again, at the end of the night, we're going to ask one person to then, you know, summarize your table or your group's uh, top three ideas. Um, so, uh, you know, the facilitators will help you um, with, with get ready for that. Um, and I just have a couple of ground rules here. Um, so, uh, you know, again, each, each room is going to have a facilitator who's going to help to mark on the map. Um, and we really ask tonight if you to, to focus on what you'd like to see and not just how, um, because our, our job is to, you know, figure out how, um, you know, how things are paid for, how do we, uh, what phasing is, um, but we really need to make sure that you know, what we're working towards is the right thing. So help us to identify, you know, what the, that future vision is. Um, and, you know, while folks are talking, the chat is, is going to stay open. So you could also, you know, chat additional ideas. If someone says something and it makes you think of something else, you can use that. Uh, just a few ground rules for Zoom. If there's a lot of background noise where you are, you may want to mute your mic if you're not speaking. Um, and of course, you know, just be open and courteous to everyone's ideas the same way we are when we meet in person. So uh, with that, I'm going to, you know, say for everyone, have fun. You're going to get a little um, uh, breakout room box like this in just a minute. And if you click OK, um, you'll be in your room. And so we'll see you all back here uh, in a little bit. Elise? OK, everybody. Everyone should be back in the main meeting. Um, so what we're going to do now is go ahead and start with group one. If the facilitator, I think that was Amy, wants to share her screen and show what the three big ideas are, and um, let me know who the speaker is also for group one. It's actually, it's Kenneth who needs to share her screen. He has the, the notes, and uh, Christy with our spokesperson. Awesome. So. Um, Kenneth, be able to screen share? Yeah, just waiting for them to come up to talk to. <laughs> um, hi, everybody. Um, we, we had um, several people in that are on the Parkview Community Board. Um, so a lot of the things that we were talking about um, were related to Parkview, um, Ellicott Creek Park, and um, parts of Niagara Falls Boulevard. And one of the things that, um, w um, for those that did go out on the, the bus ride yesterday, and then, you know, if, as you're driving through the neighborhood, the, we're working on improvements to the Thistle Bridge crosswalk area. Right now, there's some nice brand new, um, the, the bright yellow green signs and a nice crosswalk with um, a very nice sidewalk that was put in last fall to make the cross crossing much easier from Thistle over into Ellicott Creek Park. Um, some of the things we also talked about was we, we've seen some uh, motorcycles going over that particular pedestrian bridge. Not sure, um, you know, so if we could raise this up to, um, you know, between the park and, you know, our um, uh, police um, departments. Uh, another thing is the speed along Ellicott Creek Road. We've all noticed that um, on Ellicott Creek Road between um, Colvin Boulevard up to Niagara Falls Boulevard, in that particular section, it's 35 miles per hour. Everywhere else, it, it, it's like 30 miles per hour. And 
it's uh, the traffic flows through there very, very quickly. Sometimes you you could if we could stand there with like um, a speed gun, you'd think some people are doing like 45 up to 50 miles an hour as you wrap around. And there's parts like right down by um, uh, Dexter and a couple other areas where the park used to trim away all the, the growth that's there. I'm 5'4", and there's some grasses that are taller than I am. So you can't see the traffic coming. If you're trying to make a left, you're not necessarily going to be able to see a car coming. And th there have been, you know, accidents and such over there. So that that's... We had a lot of different things tied to with um, Ellicott Creek and, and the park. And also um, down by um, Ellicott Creek and Dexter Terrace, there's that nice parking lot where people go and park. It's packed all summer long. As soon as the kayak launch gets put in, that area is like very, very busy. So there's a lot and it's right as you come off Niagara Falls Boulevard. So um, could we possibly even build um, like a walking path down through on you know, that side of the road. Another item we were talking about is um, down by um, Home Depot. Um, when, you, when you're trying to make turns into, um, you know, as you're headed south and you wanna make a left-hand turn into um, Home Depot, uh, the, the, it, it's always, it's a tight spot. Um, the, the timing of the lights and such makes it, uh, people are, you know, quickly turning in front of other people. Or if you're headed north and you want to turn on to Dexter right there, you got people um, block, locking up, um, wanting to turn into Home Depot or um, going to the Pancake House or turn into Parkview, you know, make a, you know, both trying to make a left on their particular direction. So uh, that particular area is um, of concern down there. We even talked about possibly because this all from Niagara Falls Boulevard to Ellicott Creek. Uh, is showing up on GPSs for making turns. Uh, we were talking about possibly um, the idea of adding additional lights down Niagara Falls Boulevard and, and get the timing so that it slows people down and the traffic flows a little easier. And if you put a light at Thistle, it also could be a, a much safer area for people crossing the street because you've got um, checkers and then you've got Ted's and Anderson's, you know, right there where a lot of people are going when the weather gets really, really nice outside. And our third topic was um, to try to create a better um, environment up and down the boulevard. Um, we, we were talking about having areas similar to like what's available in Kenmore and Williamsville where the speed limit is slower in both of those areas and you have like little mini areas where um, you have local businesses where people could walk and go shopping into you know a particular place that's not a chain kind of item it could be um, as simple as like a coffee shop an ice cream shop um, or somebody that does crafts, those kinds of things, have that built up along in the areas along Niagara Falls Boulevard to give people another place to stop, get out, enjoy, walk around, and be able to enjoy what we offer here in Tonawanda and Amherst. Great, thank you. Oh, thank um, you. Perfect, and so we're gonna go to uh, breakout room number two. Um, Eric, if you don't mind, sharing your screen to show the big ideas. Mm -hmm. And who was your speaker? John Radens um, was our speaker. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Talked about a lot of things, but I think the big, big ideas were the neighborhood connectivity with regional trails and paths path networks. I think we all acknowledge that it's a little little shaky, um, can be dangerous getting just to the bike paths. It's nice that they're close by, but access to them is uh, can be a challenge. The um, Ellicott Creek Park improvements would um, be, it was brought up about it. It doesn't, there's nothing distinctive about it. It's not inviting. You don't really know that you're maybe entering a park if you're not from the area. Uh, so that could be improved. Um, and then I think maybe we're going to find this as a common theme, improve the safety on the boulevard. We talked about a median. Um, maybe that's not a good idea, but these are ideas that need to be pre presented and then uh, either show support for them or 
uh, the negative for them. I think there's some people that both ways on it. Um, and then th I think there's a concern. I especially have a concern about the DOT's ability to take input, the willingness to take input from residents and uh, be open-minded about it. Uh, maybe safety on the boulevard to be improved if there is just uh, more enforcement of the laws uh, of the limits that we have now. Um, and I'm willing to let like Steve jump in if I've left something out or Eric, you were our facilitator. Did you, do I think you have a captured? Do I have a captured? Yeah, I think you did a good job. Uh, definitely the, the three things that were mentioned are high okay. on our list. Um, right. and, and we're fine. I mean, there, there, there was so much, uh, enrichment to the topics. I mean, we'd be here all night if we really were able to make a longer list. <laughs> we did okay. a good job. Thank you. So. Thanks, John and Steve. All right. Well, thank you all so much for taking the time to come out tonight and uh, meet with us and, and share your ideas. And and Molly reminded only, me there, there's a oh there was what? only two breakouts. That was it. Um, oh, yeah. I thought we were going to hear here for breakout room three, four, and five. <laughs> no, it was just two tonight. And um, Molly reminds me, and I put a link in the chat um, at, on the website. Uh, there's a, a news feed that's recapping the the events from the charrette, and uh, there's some uh, you know the uh, a box there. If you think of something in the middle of the night that you didn't tell us today, and and you want you want to tell us about where monitoring all of those. So um, please go there and, um, and tell us your thoughts and curious from everyone who is here, uh, you know, what uh, important things um, you want to make sure that we're thinking about. And uh, we'll keep thinking, uh, you know, as we work over the next few days, we'll be thinking of that. Uh, Molly, is there anything else about the website you want to talk about? Yeah, just give a little plug. I know in our group, um, we had a good conversation with some, some pretty specific, specific, maybe neighborhood only level knowledge uh, on some things, which um, if you go to the website, there's a virtual charrette that is also open. And kind of like what you saw um, the team doing today, you have that opportunity to go in and you can click anywhere in on that interactive map. Um, and name, you know, those spots, put some comments, thoughts, issues, ideas to that. And there's op an option there now as well to upload photos. So maybe you're on a walk and you see something, head to that link. You can take a picture of that and submit it right there alongside that point. Um, maybe it's a different idea. You have a picture of, of something somewhere else you are and you think, hey, this is great. Or, you know, you are a planning nerd like a lot of us and are Googling things and have some examples you'd like to pop up there. Um, please feel free to use that as well. You can submit as any number of points as you'd like. It's just kind of going and click them one at a time. What's that website again? I put that in there. You can find the link. It's on the, um, the Charette newsfeed page, as well as the second link that I sent there um, in the chat has the, is the direct link to the virtual Charette. All right. Okay. Uh, can I ask a question? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, it was brought up about a median on the Niagara on Niagara Falls Boulevard. Um, I'm not sure, Eric. I think Eric may have asked that. But what what was the what I what would that median possibly look like? Are you talking about grass median? You know those islands that separate the east from the west, and it's it's got grass that somebody's got to cut. Is that what the idea is? I don't, even, I don't even think we went that far to even think what would be in it. I think we were we just didn't. talking about safety improvements and um, and access management um, to you know reduce the risk of uh, angle collisions and people using uh, the two way left turn lane in conflicting manners, um, and also provide an opportunity for a median a refuge island to uh, when uh, people making crossing movements uh, on foot. So what goes in it? Okay, we didn't even get that far. But uh, John, do you mind if I ask, is that an idea that you think would, is worthy of further investigation? You mean grass? Medium. No, <laughs> uh, no I think maybe an enforcement, I think it, it, is used as, it is used as an acceleration lane. I think we have to be realistic about that. But I've seen the city put grass in on Main Street around UB and up by Sisters Hospital. And I think it's a disaster. And there's no place for cars to stack. 
there, you know, there's a whole bunch of traffic issues. And I would hope if anybody, if that was brought up about, because then you're restricting it, you can't go there. And we might put hash marks along to say it's suggested you don't park here or accelerate. And Sweet Home Road has it too. And then there are just so many other issues that where Sweet Home has it by the school and cutting the lawn and then the grass goes on, and gets in the drains. I'm thinking of a whole bunch of environmental problems. I would be, I think it would be a disaster to put it in. We'd find ourselves having to take it out in five years. I, I second what John just said. And in addition, that uh, some, one of the reasons why the center lane is being abused the way it is is because the boulevard doesn't accommodate them very well. And the center lane is the only space that's left. And we mentioned that the, that the car dealers use it as a, as a loading zone. They actually park the car carriers in the middle of the road and cross two lanes to get their cars into the lot. Uh, people use it as a jog over lane to get from one side to the other because at certain times of the day, you're unable to time uh, straight across the boulevard thing. Uh, pedestrian uses it to stand still. It's a, it's a catch-all space for what's left over after the boulevard takes over everything else. I should and, say, and after the traffic takes over everything else. I've seen this traffic safety board in the town of Amherst does not, well, they've recommended strongly certain zoning things were not granted uh, or planning issues were not granted if the dealership over on Sheridan and um, uh, where the Lexus dealer is. Th is. That is not a permitted use of a median to unload cars with a trailer. Uh, and that's the, de the dealership is using it because it's not being enforced. But the, the New York State DOT, I don't think, from what I remember from traffic safety, that is not a permitted use of a state highway. Right, and, and that was, as I said, that was, I brought that up personally to the, uh, the Town of Wanda planning board when they had that individual because we're watching what was going down at Northtown. Yep. And, you know, they, 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 didn't, they didn't agree with it. They decided not to do that as a restriction. And we do have that, that issue. I agree with John, you know, what they did on Main Street, while it might look pretty, it's, use, it's useless. Um, and we do have that on the boulevard. I like some of the lows, but if you want to, Take a good look at it. Try to make the left-hand turn or make a U-turn because you got to go back. Let's say like at the Boulevard and Meyer Road when the traffic's coming. You, you, while you might stop one issue, I think you're creating another issue uh, because everybody's now trying to make this quick U-turn as traffic's coming in the other direction for you. Or 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 getting on, going on to the residential streets to try and work around the block. It's going to increase traffic on you know, the, the Den Rose and Dexter and those, those especially those first uh, residential streets, um, it's going to force a lot more traffic onto those. And that's, uh, that's not a good thing either. Well, a lot of this is being, a lot of these problems, the root cause of them is the change in speed between what is actual, people are doing on both sides of the boulevard, okay, and people that are coming from the side streets trying to get across it. And on the boulevard, you're trying to accelerate not to 40 miles per hour, which is the speed limit, but the 50, which is what people are actually driving on the boulevard, from 25 or 30 miles per hour in the parking lots or adjacent, adjacent uh, residential side streets. So it's, this, it's the change in speeds from what the surrounding area is to this isolated 50 mile per hour acceleration zone. We, I, think we can, I think we can all agree that the Niagara Falls Boulevard at any time of day, any day of week resembles Mario Kart and people are cutting yeah. in and out and yeah. driving too fast. And, you know, just I, in, that's going to take enforcement. And it doesn't matter if you have a median or not restrictions or not it yep. takes enforcement and the, and and the proper behavior of pedestrians requires enforcement the kids never get into accidents because they're good at the video games and they're using the same skills on the boulevard it's not just for kids no i'm only half kidding <laughs> Ooh, that was a pretty hip pop culture reference there Part of Mario Kart video game. Well, we're a hip neighborhood. <laughs> Amy, uh, Amy, you want the last word? 
Sure. Yeah, I just, and while y'all were talking, I put up on the uh, screen here. So there, that website is down there, bottom left there, connectingwrpv.com. So uh, again, if you can go there um, to give us additional feedback, if you, you think of additional things after we log off tonight, um, tell us. Uh, and then, uh, of course, drop by the studio. So um, tomorrow we'll be there um, until at least 8.30. Uh, and uh, Wednesday again all day, um, you know, from nine in the morning. Uh, so if you want to just drop in and look over our shoulders, see what we're working on, uh, you're welcome to do that. And then uh, please, if you can, join us on Thursday night at six o'clock. Um, it's going to be via Zoom, so you can go to the website to get the link. Um, tell your neighbors, uh, do that as well. It's a really good time, even if they haven't come to anything yet. Uh, they'll get caught up on what we spoke about this week and um, all the all of the ideas we have, and uh, we'll be looking for some feedback and see if we're in the right direction. So, um, with that, is, oh, go is, ahead. Is Wednesday at five p.m. Is that still a charrette for Willow Ridge? So we have um, so while we're in the studio, we have a few different um, stakeholder meetings, and so we've arranged a meeting for community groups. I think that's what you're you're meaning. So we have um, some of the. Uh, the Willow Ridge Association and the Parkview. Um, Kim, I don't know if you want to say anything about that, but we have invited people um, to come in um, in different groups throughout the next few days. So we have, um, when you pop by the studio, you might find there's a meeting, for example, we've invited, um, you know, uh, the, the town's transportation folks to come over at a certain time or, you know, parks and rec. Uh, and so we have one uh, Wednesday at five o'clock, I believe, for um, different community groups, neighborhood groups, and that's, um, that is still happening. And and you can get a you know a preview of what we're working on um, and what we're gonna uh, what we're working on for Thursday night. Um, but of course, it's open all day. If you want to drop in at any time and, and see, everyone here is welcome. So, oh, thank you so much, everybody, for all your time. And um, this is a great experience. So, um, it, it's exciting, you know, and it'll be fun to watch to see what's going to come from you know from it and everything. Great. And Kim, any last words from the town before we log off? Oh yeah, I'm just I'm just happy that people are getting involved and um, are excited about you know opportunities that we can you know have in these areas. So keep, uh, by all means, this does not after the seventh does not stop. The process continues. Um, so you know we'll we'll definitely keep you in the loop. And um, if things come up and we need your input, we'll we'll call on you again. I think right, the transparency you, transparency has been good. People want transparency and. I think the lead, the town leaders of Amherst and Tonawanda are doing the best that they, that they can to make sure this is transparent. Thanks, John. Write a letter for that. That was good. <laughs> I haven't Thanks, seen everybody. Such, I haven't seen such happy planners in 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> so many smiling planners. We've seen a lot of them come through here. This is really refreshing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good Thank night. You, everybody. Good night.